Hallelujah. To God be the glory, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, to the third part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, that leads and guides each and every one of his children, to the angel of the great old grove house, uh, Pastor D.R. Lewis, and to all of God's children, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. <clears throat> Our scripture will be found from the fourth chapter of Mark, starting at the uh, 35th verse, all the way to the 41st. And it reads, On the same day, when Hebron had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat, as he was, and others, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep, on the pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? <clears throat> then he arose and said, Rebuke the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But, but he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The grass will wither, and the flowers are going to fade, but the word of God will last forever. Let us thank the Lord. Our Father, our God, we come to you as humbly as we know how, with head bows and contrite hearts. But first and foremost, just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to call on your holy name. Forgive us of all our sins and transgressions, Lord. You said in your word that we sinned against you. So, Lord, right now, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. But we wouldn't have access to any of that if it wasn't for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for a wretch like me. But on that third day, he got up with all power in his hand. Just personally, Lord, thank you for allowing me to get up in my life. Now, Lord, we need to hear a word from you. Chaos and division is all over the world. Sickness and death is all over the world, Lord. We need to hear a word from you. We need to hear a word from you, Lord. So touch the man of God. Touch his body, touch his mind, touch his spirit, Lord. Strengthen him where he's weak. Continue to watch over his family. We just thank you for the love first he has for you and then for your people, Lord. Just thank you right now. Because when the smoke clear, when it's all said and done, maybe somebody will say, what must I do to be saved? So touch right now. Let this broadcast go out and touch someone all over this world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. It is a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Why don't you all join us for praise and worship as we glorify Him. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Everybody say, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. The power of the Lord.
the power of the Lord. Let the power of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the power of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the power of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. oh let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. oh, let it rise. Let the dance of the Lord say. Let the dance of the Lord. The dance of the Lord. Let the dance of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the dance of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the dance of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. oh let it rise. Let the shout of the Lord, let the shout of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the shout of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the shout of the Lord. family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, first of all, for forgiving us, forgiving us of our sins and our transgressions, those that we've done knowingly and unknowingly against thee. Your word reminds us that when we sin, we sin against thee and thee alone. Lord, I pray now that you would allow your Holy Spirit to occupy this room, this space, this clay vessel, so that my thoughts would be your thoughts and my words would be your words. Lord, I pray that if there's somebody here who's listening, that they would hear something that would encourage them to want to have a relationship with you. Bless all those who are here and in charge of allowing this broadcast to take place and everything that has been said this far. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want to again uh, just thank uh, everybody who has participated thus far in our program, and uh, I want to uh, again draw our attention to this text. It's a very familiar passage of text, and sometimes, of course, as always, when it's a familiar pas passage that uh, we tend to just assume we know uh, all that there is to say it, but it reminds me of how real uh, the Bible is and that uh, no matter how much you read it, you can never exhaust all that God has to say. Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35, and I'm reading from the King James Version of our word today. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there was also little ships with him. 
And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to tag this uh, sermon for a little while this morning. What a strange question in a storm. Strange questions in a storm. Uh, by now, I'm sure that any of us who've been in church at any length of time uh, is quite familiar with this passage of Scripture. And I'm always amazed at how, no matter how often uh, you read certain passages, that uh, rather than leave with many answers, uh, that I often leave with more questions than answers. This particular text provides uh, that same scenario uh, in my mind, and hopefully uh, by the time I finish, uh, that even if I don't answer all of the questions, I will create more questions that would lead you to want uh, to study the Word of God more uh, for yourself. Storms, those of us who stay in uh, the southern parts of the United States and off the Gulf of Mexico, that we're not strangers to storms. Mm -hmm. uh, storms come in different variations. Storms come in different sizes. And storms come uh, at times when we expect them or other times when we least expect them. Most of the storms that we're familiar with are hurricanes. Then you have thunderstorms. Other parts of the country has to deal with blizzards and wintry storms. Uh, other parts of the world has to deal with tsunamis and other storms equal or similar uh, to them. And one of the things about uh, the storms that, that I just mentioned is that if there is uh, anything positive about them, that on the most part, these storms, if you have a good uh, meteorologist or the right instrumentation, that often they can detect these storms and let you know that they're on their way. Uh, but what about when you deal with other storms, when you deal with financial storms, when you deal with domestic storms, when you deal with emotional storms, storms or even spiritual storms. Mm -hmm. These are the type of storms that don't always send you a fax, an email, or tweet you and let you know that they're on their way. It's just all of a sudden you find yourself in a storm. And, and those of us uh, know uh, who've been through uh, some of life uh, emotional storm, know that you can be up one day and you can be down the next day. And that it doesn't take much for storms to just show up. Uh, you can go to the doctor and feel good while you're on your way. And by the time they get through running tests and they find uh, other symptoms that were not known to you before uh, you, you showed up there and then all of a sudden you find yourself uh, in a storm. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can be on a job and be there 10, 15, 20 years and everything is going well. Your boss seemed to admire you, but then uh, you have to uh, go through what they call downsizing. Mm -hmm. And then you're, uh, you, you're either not in the right position or uh, to be quite frank, you may not be the right color and then all of a sudden you've got a pink slip uh, waiting for you when you come in off your shift and you'll find yourself uh, in a storm. And that kind of storm 
uh, career storm will lead you to financial storms and other storms seem to pile up because of, of that storm. And here uh, in 2020, we found ourselves in one of those storms, one of those storms that uh, we don't know how we got there, just all of a sudden we're in a storm. So is the life right now of the disciples. Uh, they had been with Jesus for quite some time during the time of Mark's writing. And we have to keep in mind that when you read Mark's writing, although Mark uh, 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 was not an eyewitness account, uh, his writings is really the story that's told by Peter. Most theologians, theologians agree that Peter was the one who was supplying the information that his stenographer, Mark, was writing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that because here in, in this uh, passage, there are so much details about the storm right. that one has to know that this is not something that he heard uh, from somebody who was passing by, but the, the details of it gives us uh, an indication that this was the result of an eyewitness account. Look at how it reads. It gives us the time of the day. It, it says, and in the same day when the even was come. Mm -hmm. And in order to understand what that same day was, you've got to go all the way back to verse 1 and see where Jesus started off talking about the sower and the seed. And then he talks, uh, began talking about parables. And then around verse 30, 30 he, he started dealing with the faith uh, of a mustard seed. And right after him teaching about the faith of the mustard seed, you will see that the faith of the disciples was immediately on trial. And, and then look at what else it says. It says, and when the evening come, he said unto to them, let us pass over onto the other side. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 36, it says, and when they sent away the multitude, see the details, they took him even as he was in the ship. And the indicative language there is that Jesus or the disciples did not go back to the shore, that he continued to teach, uh, the, I mean, they continued to start their travel from the same boat in which he was using as his pulpit. And you don't mind if I use uh, a nickel and kind of park there uh, in the meter for a little while because I believe that every pulpit ought to be a fishing boat mm -hmm. when we reel out the word of God so that men and women can come and taste and see that the Lord is good. And then the other details there is that it let us know, it, it, is lit letting, it, it, it begins to say to us that they were not on the water by themselves because of the sea clause in verse 36 says, and there were also with him other little ships. And then verse 37 seems to change the whole tranquility of what was going on because it says, all of a sudden there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now allow me to slow down and make sure that we understand the specificities of what he's making, he's alluding to us that this storm was a different storm. And unfortunately, in the translation from the Greek to the English, that there's some language there, or there are some uh, terminologies there that are absent in the English language that we can't really get the full comprehension of what this storm was really all about. We here know about storms. When we hear about thunderstorms, we know that it's thunder, the, with the thunderstorm that you've got rain coming in, coming down from up above, and you've got the wind whistling around, usually turning into a, a fierce, uh, uh, the thunderstorm will turn eventually, uh, depending uh, how bad it is, into a hurricane. And we categorize the, uh, the fierceness of it by saying it's a category one, category two, and so on and so on. But here, the Greeks, they didn't categorize that. And so all they said is that there arose a great storm of wind. And it suggests that this storm, because it involved the wind and the waves and how that both the winds caused the waves to beat into the ship, to the point that it was now full. And you notice that there doesn't seem to be any time lapse between when the storm showed up 
and the, and the wind and the waves began to beat into the ship that it was now full. So it appears that when the storm showed up, it, st- it showed up at the, at the, at the tip uh, or the top of its strength to the point to where it started beating against the little ship that they were on. And then it says that, uh, um, that, the, the, that, that the, the, the ship was now full. And, you, and you, you've got to see that uh, in your mind because it, you don't have a problem uh, in a boat when the boat is on the water, right. but, but you have problems in a boat when the water is in the boat. As long as the boat is on the water, you're fine. But when the water gets in the boat, that's when you have some trouble. And then uh, I need to share with you that I'm not just simply talking about boats, but I'm talking about how when the storms are outside of your house, it's outside uh, of your family, it's not touching you, then people uh, have a tendency to want to tell other people how to handle a storm, but they can't handle their own storm. It's easy for me to say to you what to do when, uh, your, when, when, when my boat uh, is on the water, but, but, but how do you handle life when, when water is in your boat? How do, how do you handle life when, when, and then add insult to injury, how did they get there in the first place? Well, you've got to go back to verse 35 because it is Jesus who said to them, let us pass over unto the other side. And then uh, that, that, there's so much in here uh, that, 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 that just uh, con- con- continue to, to, to make me want to ask questions because you, you've got to look at who's in the boat. These are, these are the disciples of Jesus and what we know about them is that they were familiar with the Sea of Galilee, that they, they were familiar with it. Some of them, most of them, especially uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John, who, who, who were fishermen, they probably uh, used the Sea of Galilee was their boyhood playground. So they knew uh, all about this and being trained fishermen, had they knew a storm was showing up, they, they never would have gotten on the boat, but out of obedience of Jesus' words, when he said, let us pass over unto the other side, the language, the indicative language there is they got in the boat just as Jesus told them to do, and then all of a sudden, the storm shows up. I, I've got a question for you right quick. Uh, when, when you're going through a storm, and you're in a storm because you've been obedient to God's word, then what do you do? Uh, uh, who do you tell uh, 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 God on? Who, who, who do you, what do you say to God that, that, that Lord, I've been obedient uh, to you, but, but I'm in a storm because I, I've listened to the words uh, of your son. They, they, they find themselves in, in a boat. And then look at what they did. And, and, and it says, and it, he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar, and they awake him. And say to him, first question, Master, carest thou not that we perish? You, you, need, to, you need to put a pin there because I think that this is an important question for us, not because of just the question itself, but because of the people that were asking the question. Uh, they said to him, he, he sleep on a pillar in the hinder part uh, of the ship, and I, I don't want to insult your intelligence and assume that you don't know the story. And so, and, and if you don't, uh, take your time and, and read it when you get a chance. But, 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 but look at how they addressed. They said, "Master, carest thou not that we perish?" The, the idea of their saying, "Master," it, it is a term uh, of reverence, is a term uh, of respect, it is a term uh, of, uh, of 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 recognizing that. He was different than, than they were, but, and they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And, and I don't know about nobody else. I, I, I'm concerned about this. I'm, I'm concerned about them asking him whether or not he, he perished because, first of all, uh, uh, they, they must have forgot about his promise. And most of us, we, we can handle the storms better if we just hold on uh, to his promise. He said, he, he said, in verse 35, let us pass over unto the other side. And so uh, if Jesus, uh, uh, who's the son of God, and God 
himself, which means that he, he's, a, he, he's not a man that he may lie. If he says, let us pass over, that's a good indication that you won't go under. But because whenever he speaks, he speaks with clarity. He speaks with deliberateness. And, and what he's saying is that he said, let us pass over uh, unto the other side, which means that in Jesus' mind, when he went and took a nap, he was assured that when he woke up, he was going to be on the other side. And because he said, let us pass over, he was suggesting that he wouldn't be the only one on the other side because they were on the boat with him. And, 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 and as much as we might want to criticize them, I think it's worth giving them credit because at least they knew where Jesus was. Yeah. It's one thing to go through a storm and then got to find Jesus while you're in the storm. Yeah. But, but the Bible said they knew exactly where he was. And where he was, he was on a ship. Uh, he was in, in the hull of the ship, as some translators write, uh, write it. And he was on a sleep on a pillar, which means that Jesus had no worries. He, 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 was, con he was convinced that he was going to make it to the other side. And, and the Bible said that, 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 that they woke him up. And, 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 and I like that. I, I, I like that the fact, again, that they knew where Jesus was. And, and, and it says, they said, Master, carry thou not uh, if we perish. And, and, and I'm, bothered, I'm bothered by that because, again, he, he's already said we're going to make it to the other side. And, and it seemed like if you just hold on to his word that, that, that we're going to be all right. I, I know it's tough now. I know we're going through this pandemic storm, and I know that we, we can't figure out, like this storm, we, it, it just all of a sudden uh, showed up. You, 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 it's easy to, to figure out storms, listen, when you know you messed up. You, it's easy to figure out when you're in a storm, when, when you've done something wrong, but, but what about when they just show up? And, and, and I've got an answer for you if you just uh, let me work it out. The Bible says, verse 39, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And I know you don't see it now, but, but let me uh, unpack it, because right there in verse 39, we can understand what was the originator of this storm. And it says that he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. He, he arose and rebuked the wind, and then spoke to the sea. Do you see that? Don't miss it. He, 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 first of all, he got up. And, and, and so I, I believe that storms have a tendency to show up when Jesus is not in his rightful place in our life. Uh, look at where he was. He, he was there, but his power was not manifested because the Bible said he was asleep on a pillar. It, it's kind of like most of us that sometime, and I've shared this with us in the past, that we treat Jesus and God like a spare tire. The, the only time uh, uh, we, 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 we look for him is when everything else is not going right. And, and you know what happens uh, with, a, with, with, a, with a spare tire. When you have a flat, you, you've got to go to the trunk, and you've got to move all of the other stuff out of way in order to get to the spare tire. And, and sometimes, I, I believe God uh, allows storms to come in our lives so that we can move some stuff out of the way so that we'll realize that when we can't depend on nobody else, when we can't depend on our ingenuity or our influence or our ability to massage our way out of the situation, and when God is all you have, you'll discover that God is all you need. Here they are. They're on this boat. They can't do nothing, so they go and find Jesus. So, so that's the first reason why I, I, I think that we, we find ourselves in storm. But the other reason why we, we find ourselves in storm is because Satan does not fight fair. Mm -hmm. Satan will wait until Jesus is not, we have allowed Jesus to not be where he ought to be in our lives, and Satan shows up. I, I know that because the language that the text uses when it says, and he rebuked the wind. Do you see that? The word he uses there for rebuke is the same word that he uses in Mark chapter 1 when that man was in the synagogue, and, and the Bible said that he was teaching the word of God, and this man was possessed 
by a demon and Jesus rebuked him. And that word rebuke means to be muzzled. And the same word that he used in Mark chapter 1, he's using now here in chapter 4, which suggests to me that this is a satanic mood storm. This storm decides to show up, number one, because Jesus was asleep on a pillow. And Satan decided that if he can show up and destroy Jesus and keep him from making it to the other side, then you all know the Bible. You realize, remember that it's in chapter 5. The first thing that Jesus did was rebuke the demons that was in that man and told that man to go back home and tell your family you're going to be all right. The same chapter 5 is where he not only showed he had power over demons, but he also showed that he had power over disease because there was a woman that had a disease for 12 long years, and the Bible said that she touched the hem of his garment, and sooner than at once, and quicker than right now, that the disease that laid hold on her uh, 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 all of a sudden just went away. And then after that, the messenger from Jairus, whose daughter had died, came to Jesus and told Jairus to leave the master alone that your daughter that was dying is now dead. Jesus said to Jairus that the reason why I wanted you to walk with me to see me heal this woman with a 12-year-old disease so that you'll know if I can heal a woman with a 12-year-old disease, I can heal your 12-year-old daughter proving that he has power over demons, that he has power over disease, and he has power over death. Now, if he can handle disease, if he can handle demons, if he can handle death, surely he can handle this natural disaster. And, and so that's what a text is showing us, that he says to, to rebuke the wind, and then he talked to the sea. I, I like that, Ray. He, he, he rebuked the wind, told the wind to shut up. And then he began to talk to the sea and said, peace, be still. And so I believe that here we sing the, the, the sea, uh, uh, seeing the one that created him, and that even the sea got enough sense to obey the voice of its creator. And the Bible said that the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But then all of a sudden, uh, we got another question that we've got to deal with. We, Jesus has already, and, and at this point, I don't, I don't need to try to convince you that, that he can work a miracle. I'm sure that somebody, where you are right now, you can lift a hand and say, yes, he's a miracle worker. But, 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 but let's, let's, let's look, at, look, look at the other interrogative uh, inquiries in this text. Verse 40, and he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it? that you have no faith. No faith. And, 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 and Brother Terrence, I, I would have been all right uh, had he been, uh, he had addressed this to somebody else. I, 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 I would have been all right if he had said it uh, to, to people who didn't really, really know him. I, I would have been all right had it been some, some passers by. I would have been all right uh, had it been the Pharisees or the Sadducees of the scribe, but he's asking this question to those who know who he is. He, he's asking this question to the disciples who had been walking with him for at this time for at least about two years. He, he's asking this question about those who had watched him do miracles in the past, and yet they're at a point when it seems like they ought to be a demonstration to others on how to have faith in God, he says to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have, watch this. He didn't ask them, why is it that you're demonstrating little faith? He asking them, why is it that you have no faith? Where is your faith in God? I, I believe, brothers and sisters, and I, I know this, not the uh, this is a tough time, and, I, and, and I'm not trying to, uh, 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 to belittle the situation that we find ourselves in, but it seems like at this point we ought to have a faith file, that, that we ought to have a, a faith file where we can go back and, and, and draw uh, something from our faith file, remembering that he brought us through before, that he can bring us through this time. Uh, 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 we ought to have enough faith that, that, that even 
if, if it don't work out like we planned, that, that, that we're still, we're going to be all right because nothing happens that haven't been either God sent or God allowed. And, and since nothing happened outside of God's divine will, that means that whatever he does, we ought to be satisfied. Otherwise, we ought to quit saying, uh, quit quoting Romans 8 and 28 that when we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are, calling, uh, who are called according to his purpose. We ought to just quit saying that if we don't really believe it. And, and then look at, look at what he said. He, he says that, that why is it that you have no faith? And then verse 41, he says, and they feared exceedingly. And then they said to one another, last question, what manner a man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Oh, how I wish that I can roll back the hand of time and just be somewhere in the crowd and knowing what I know and knowing what I've been through, knowing what he's bought me from. And like everybody else that's listening to this broadcast or anybody else uh, that may be listening a week or two or three weeks from now, I, I don't know of any family that this COVID disease has not impacted them in one way or another. But, but, but let me be clear that in the last seven or eight months, there are other people dying from things other than this pandemic situation. But, but, but through it all, we still got to learn how to trust in God and, 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 and losing some of the people uh, that I've lost and, 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 and knowing other people who've lost loved ones. Yes. Even with all of that, if the question were asked, what kind of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I could stand and, 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 and just raise my hand and, and just jump up and down and say, oh, I, I, I can answer that. He, he's the king of kings. Yes, he is. He, he, he's the Lord of Lord. Mm -hmm. he, he's mighty merciful. Mm -hmm. he, he's all you need. Mm -hmm. he, he can, he's still still in calming the sea. Mm -hmm. And if he can still calm the sea, see, then he can do the same thing in your life right now. Mm -hmm. But for us, we just got to hold on to his unchanging hand. Yes. Because regardless of what you go through, you have to know that he still cares for us. Yes. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that even when we find ourselves in the midst of the storm, that at least we're in the storm with Jesus. Yes. Because your word says, Lo, I'm with you always, yes. even unto the end of the world. Lord, we don't know how we're going to make it, but one thing we do know, that we will make it. Yes. Because your word is true, and that is, you still care for us. Yes. Lord, I pray for all of us who are still dealing with uh, this present situation that we find ourselves in. And Lord, we are pleased with the news of some progress being made in terms of a vaccine. Uh, but Lord, at the end of the day, yes. we know that nothing will happen until you allow it. Yes. And so Lord, we pray for that. And then Lord, I pray uh, for others who are in the midst of a holiday season and uh, the joy is just not there as it once was because of the losses that have been experienced in 2020 mm -hmm. or even years past. And I pray, Lord, that you would provide the presence that we need to help us to remember that you're still on the throne. Lord, I ask that you would continue to bless all of our first responders and everybody who continue to risk their lives yes. on behalf of others. And then, Lord, thank you for those who are just standing, staying on their knees yes. or in postures of prayer, continuing to intercede 
on behalf of, on behalf of others. And then, Lord, I pray, and particularly right now, uh, for the Ray family who, who's going through a storm uh, right now. And, Lord, I pray uh, that you would remind them uh, that you're still there and you're still on the throne. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the only name that matters, all agree said, amen. Amen, amen. amen. To God be the glory. We, uh, we thank Pastor Lewis for that mighty word. Strange questions in a storm. And I just jotted some little notes down. Says uh, He mentioned that storms come in, in all shapes and sizes. You know, my storm might not be your storm, but it's a storm, though. It's something we're going through. And, uh, but the thing is, uh, like the songwriter says, but I can see the sun. Shining through the clouds, you know. Uh, so he just blessed me personally uh, this morning. Uh, so I just thank him personally for this mighty word. Uh, and I couldn't, I just couldn't get past the first verse. He says, uh, let us go, pass over to the other side. And then and he says, uh, if we just hold on to his promise. Yeah, yeah, it's getting rough and it's getting tough. But if we just hold on to his promise, so if we go going to the other side, if Jesus says we're going to the other side, we're going to the other side. So I just thank him. It just, it just, it just was powerful. And I'm, and I'm just, as he walked through the text, and it's like, but they didn't know what to do. Man, that, that ship was rocking and rolling. Man, it, but they, they, they did do this. They woke him up, you know. They say, man, and, and just asking questions. Both parts are asking questions. Disciples are asking questions. Jesus are asking questions. And they said, uh, you don't care that we perish? Man, where's your faith at? And asking the question with a question. Where's your faith? Oh, just mighty word. It just really spoke to me personally. Just thank you, Pastor. But, and you might be going through something right now. Just uh, you and your spouse are contemplating separation and divorce. Man, I don't care how, what way you turn that. That's, that's a storm, because uh, one day y'all said, I do. But now y'all contemplating to say, I don't. That's a, that's a storm. Uh, maybe you and your children are not getting along, and you done raised them in the fear and the ammunition of the Lord. And it just, man, y'all can't even sit at the same dinner table together. Can't even have just a conversation or just see about someone's day. That's a storm. But also, children, maybe, you, you know, say, you don't understand, Brother Preacher. It says, honor your, honor your parents and the Lord. And I'm trying to do that. But they don't understand me. They don't want to listen to anything I have to say. That's a storm. And, he, and the pastor talked about at the workplace. We cutting back. Technology is coming in. We, can, we got, <clears throat> where you was uh, doing this job, we got a technology now that can do the job of 20 people, you know. That's a storm. Because you, in your high 50s, but you contemplating about going back to school and, and getting another trade. That's a storm, you know. Sickness is all around us. Death is all around us. That's a storm. But we go back to verse 35. Let us pass over to the other side. And that's Jesus talking. If it's in your Bible, hopefully it's, it's in red. But that's Jesus talking. And I just couldn't get past it. He says, if we continue to hold on to his promise. So that's where we're at right now. If he has reign and rule over you, you will hold on to his promise. So I'm asking you right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, this is the time. Give your life to Christ. Say, Lord, it's a simple prayer. You hold your hands up like so, like you, like you surrender. You know, you've seen the movies and the, and the t television police stories freeze and you hold your hands up 
and you say, I surrender to you, Christ. I want you to be reign and rule over my life. I would love for you to be Lord over my life. I done tried it my way and I fell on my face many times. I want to turn it over to you. Say, Lord, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe you was buried. I believe on the third day you got up and not only got up, but you got up with all power in your hand. Now come into my life. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Man, just there's no special way to say it. You talk to God the way you want to talk to God. Because it says in, in, in Romans, it says, our prayers is nothing but murmurs, and the Holy Spirit straightens them out and give them to God. So right now, you talk to God just like you would... Uh, Talk to your father, your own personal father, and that you're looking for permission for something. You know, you come to him humbly, you come to him uh, with respect and reverence, and you ask him, come into my life right now. So right now, Lord, come into my life right now. It's ours to extend. It's yours to accept or reject. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you right now for your word. Thank you for Pastor Lewis as he dissected the text in a mighty way. But Lord, there's someone out there that don't know you in the part of your sin. The, the word has went forth and you promised us, another promise, that your word wouldn't return void. So thank you, Lord, for your word. But prick their heart right now. Don't let them make another step, another move, and uh, wait another day to give their life to you, Lord. So touch right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Thank you. Now it's time for us to prepare ourselves to take the whole communion. And I hope that by now you all have uh, have it in your possession. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank thee for loving us enough to give us your son. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us enough to give us your life. And Lord, as we prepare ourselves to participate in what you have commanded us to do in terms of remembering you, and that's through this Holy Communion, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins and our transgressions and allow us to be worthy to participate in this Holy Communion. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Bible teaches us, and on that night that he was betrayed, that he blessed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he blessed it, and he said, take, eat, this is my body. You may take it now. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this would be the cup of, your, of salvation, and without it, there would be no remissions of sins, you may drink ye all of it. And he said that once you do this, you show forth his death, burial, and resurrection until he shall return. Amen. Amen. Amen.